I've been a Mac user my whole life, and so there's a lot of tips and tricks that I use on the daily that I kind of forget a lot of people don't know. And so I enrolled your help by going on Twitter and asking you what your favorite Mac tips are that you either use with frequency or you think that a lot of people may not know. I've gathered some of the best. Some are advanced, some are simple, uh, but they're all awesome. So let's talk about them. All right, our first tip comes from Anderson, and they're not actually tips, they are two applications. Now, these are the only two apps we're going to talk about, but I am mentioning them because they are really important ones that I use with frequency. So uninstalling stuff that doesn't come from the App Store on Mac is, is kind of weird. Generally, people just drag the apps into the trash. But the reality is, let's grab something like Chrome here. You'll note that there's actually a lot of different uh, like plist and configuration files and save states and preferences that are stored in certain categories and hidden libraries. And when you drag the app into the trash, it doesn't actually uninstall that stuff. So App Cleaner is a really comprehensive uninstaller that gets rid of all of the crap. Uh, it's free, it's excellent, and you should definitely give it a download. The second app we're going to talk about is Mac Updater. This one is not freeware, it's paid. It's, it's $10, but I think it's the best $10 you'll ever spend. What it does is it manages all non-App Store app updating on the Mac. The majority of them, it just does automatically. So Google Chrome needs an update. If we click Update App, you'll see that it goes in the background, it finds the update package, and it updates them themselves. Uh, sometimes it will you know, uh, pop up a kind of a prompt or a package window, and you'll have to go through the standard installer. But it downloads that for you. It finds it automatically. It's super, super handy. And it shows you that you're running the latest version on all of your apps. Now, this is my production machine, so I don't have that many. But for people who update a lot of apps outside of the App Store, this is a really, really handy utility to have. There you go. It's done updating. Tip number two comes from Manjeet. Now, if you are like me, you probably just have Windows all over the place all the time. I am a single desktop user, but I know that this really freaks people out. It's not clean, it's not organized. I just tab through my different applications using Command and Tab, and uh, that works pretty well for me. But for people who want a little more organized of a setup, uh, typically use Mission Control, which used to be called Expose, and it allows you to manage multiple desktops with multiple windows. Now, you probably know about this because you've either engaged it by accident or you yourself use it. However, Manjeet gives us a really cool tip. If we go into System Preferences and then we click Desktop and Screensaver, there is a hidden little utility under the Screensaver function called Hot Corners. And Hot Corners are really sweet. It generally is in this section because you can start and stop your screensaver, but it also allows you to enter stuff like Mission Control or put the display to sleep or keep the computer awake. Um, so at the top right, he recommends we do Mission Control. And what happens is when you drag your cursor up into this area, it pops up into this desktop. I actually used it for a couple minutes, and while I still don't think I'm going to be a multiple desktop user, uh, it does seem like a really slick setup. And uh, I gotta say, it's pretty cool. So that's Hot Corners. It's hidden in System Preferences. Hey guys, this is Austin, and this is a trick that Jacques recommended. If you're watching video on primarily YouTube, but other streaming services as well, although Netflix and Hulu unfortunately are the exception, you can right click on the video. On YouTube, you have to do it twice, and there's an option to enter picture in picture. What this allows you to do is start doing other stuff outside of YouTube, but continue to watch the video in the top right or left corner or bottom right or wherever. You can drag this however you want. You can resize it to be as big or as small as you would like. It's a really, really cool option. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on Hulu and Netflix. There is a way to get around that, though, in a previous Mac Tips video, which you should check out. I'll link it down below. Lucas talked about Quick Look. What it allows you to do is render a preview in Finder without actually having to open the file. So whether it is a photo or a PDF, it will open it and render that out, which is pretty cool. A lot of people know about that. What you may not know, however, is that you can hold the space bar and it will be like a peep and pop function. And as soon as you let go of the space bar, it goes away. This is nice if you're really quickly scrolling through photos and you don't wanna to have to push the space bar over and over again. Brian mentions a really, really important one. I'm sure it's happened to you before. You're on a text document or a PowerPoint presentation. You go to paste some text and it just, holy crap, does not match the text that you've pasted. And then you go back and you change the text size and the formatting for everything. Well, you don't actually have to do that. If you press Shift Option Command V, it actually pastes the text to match the formatting of the document that you're working in. So rather than Command V for paste, it's Shift Option Command V. Really, really handy. Nate recommends something very few people know about, and that is shared full screen apps. 
Everyone knows you can click the little green radio button at the top of a window and it will enter a full screen. But what you can also do is hold down on the green button and then you can move it to either half of the screen. So let's say this half we want to be Safari and this half we want to be the App Store. The problem is, is that while you can resize them, which is kind of handy, a la the iPad, similarly to the iPad, you can't have one window quote unquote full screen over here and then a bunch of smaller windows over here. You have to select another app or another window to go full screen. And at that point, I think you're better off just using an application like Magnet or Better Touch Tool to make it more like Windows, which I think does window management much, much better than macOS. Okay, a lot of people sent in tips on how to do screenshots in macOS. Most people know you can use the application Grab, which was actually renamed to Screenshot in macOS Mojave, but there are a number of keyboard shortcuts. Now, you may think you know all of them, but maybe you don't. The basic ones are Shift-Command-3 to grab a screenshot of the whole entire desktop, and Shift-Command-4 to grab a selection. There are some interesting features though. If you have a selection going and you've decided that you started in the wrong place, you can hold down the space bar and move around the window. And then as soon as you let go of the space bar, it refixes itself back in place. You can also use the option key to resize all four corners at the same time, which is pretty handy. So those are a couple of modifiers. One other thing people don't know is if you press shift command four, you can actually press the space bar and that allows you to capture the entire window or entire desktop of a certain category which is really cool. However, the coolest tip comes from Andrew. This is one that very, very few people know, uh, but I use it with quite a bit of frequency. And that is Control Shift Command 4, or Shift Control Command 4, or Command Shift Control 4, it doesn't matter what order. You just need to do Shift Control Command and 4. Um, we can do our standard selection like always, but you'll notice that the screenshot doesn't go in the bottom right corner, nor does it save to the desktop. And that's because it doesn't save locally on your machine, but it saves to the clipboard. So you can paste with your clipboard and that allows you to paste an image. This is great if you don't want a bunch of screenshots floating around. I use this all the time when I'm making PowerPoint presentations or Word documents or sending tweets or uh, loading stuff into the web browser. It's super nice being able to paste an image rather than having to save it and then drag it to the destination. Everyone has probably battled with the volume changer in Mac OS, those clicks. A lot of people like them, a lot of people do not. In fact, uh, by default, a couple of versions ago, Apple disabled that uh, by default. So there's no feedback played when the volume is changed. You can turn that back on in the sounds panel of system preferences if you enjoy that. But what you can also do is that, let's say you have it turned on. If you hold down the shift key while you modify the volume, it doesn't make a noise. And when you let go, it does. Conversely, if you have it disabled by default, when you hold the shift key down, it makes those noises, which can be nice to kind of know how loud your volume is going to be. I have another tip that I would like to add to this though, and this is one that I use with a lot of frequency that I didn't see anyone mention. If you press shift and then option, and then either the volume keys or the brightness keys, you can actually modulate your volume and brightness in quarter increments, one quarter increments. So if, if you wanna to listen to something really quietly, let's say, you can press shift option and then go in increments of one quarter. This works for brightness too, which is really pretty handy. Emoji, there's a lot of people that use the touch bar emoji picker, and that's okay, but I don't actually even use that on my own laptops with a touch bar because I think it's just much easier to use the character palette, which you can access by pressing control, command, and space. That opens up this emoji picker and you can search emoji, so sad, and there you go, there's all your sad emojis. It's also cool because it has uh, a couple of characters that go beyond the standard emoji palette. Uh, but this is a really, really easy way to access your frequently utilized emojis, much better than the touch bar. David mentions one that honestly, I have never heard of before. And it's one that I struggle to find the, the entire functionality, but hey, it's there. It, let's say you are meaning to type the and you type T-E-H. If you press control T, you can actually transpose the prior two characters that you've typed. So if you do KJ, Control T changes it to JK. This is all it does. If you have more typos or you have a typo previously in the word, like if you meant to type there and you did T I E T, yeah, you know, that, uh, it would not work because that only shifts the previous two letters. But I mean, hey, if, if you want that, that's pretty cool, I guess. Control T. I had never seen that one. Really interesting.
It's happened to us all before. We're browsing the web, we're using an application, and we accidentally close a window that we needed. Now, in Chrome and in Safari, in some builds of Safari, that is, you can press Command Z, undo, and bring that previous window back. But in non web browser applications and in all web browsers as well, you can use the much more universal Shift Command T, and that will bring back the previous window that you accidentally closed. Super handy, regardless of application. Shift Command T. Adrian mentions one that I think is really, really simple and most people probably know about, but a lot of people liked his tweet, so maybe they don't. And that is using Spotlight to do simple computational math. Now you, by the way, you can summon Spotlight by pressing Command Space if you don't want to find it in this little magnifying glass here up in your menu bar. Uh, but you can do any uh, amount of math, and you can actually do relatively complex equations too. It respects the order of our operations, which is pretty cool. So you can do math right in your menu bar. Uh, not only can you search for weather and all that stuff, but you can also do uh, conversions from weight uh, to pounds, for example. You can do from currency, so 100. Chinese Yuan is $14.53. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, Spotlight is really, really powerful beyond just finding stuff locally on your machine. Okay, Valtteri shows us a really cool one that a lot of people probably don't know about. In Finder, when you drag a file, it actually moves the location. So I've moved this screenshot from the desktop now to my downloads folder. Um, of course, you can undo that function, but a lot of people want to know, well, how do I, I duplicate? And most people, I think, right-click and say duplicate file, and then they move it. But what you can do is actually just hold down the Option key, and you drag the file, and it creates a new duplicate in the destination folder, which is really pretty cool. What you can also do if you don't want to duplicate it, but you want to reference it through an alias, is hold down Option and Command at the same time, and then drag the file, and it creates an alias to that original image. Also pretty neat. Mike comes in clutch with one that I literally did not know about. And part of the reason is because I very seldom use Notification Center. But you can access Notification Center and then scroll up to enable Do Not Disturb. But that's a bit of a process if you want to mute incoming messages and whatever. What you can do is actually just hold down the Option key and press Notification Center, and that automatically toggles Do Not Disturb on and off, which is really pretty awesome. Okay, you know what they say, we save the easiest one for last. This is one that a lot of Mac users, especially people who have converted from a PC, don't know. And as a longtime Mac user, it blows my mind, but it is different from Windows. When you close a window in Mac OS, it doesn't actually quit the application. The application stays open. You actually have to quit the application that you're utilizing. And the shortcut to do that is Command Q to quit the application. But there's also a bunch of other handy window uh, tricks that a lot of people don't know. Uh, Command N is obviously new window. Command W closes a window. Command H will hide a window. Now that's different from minimizing. I use hiding all the time because you don't have this long animation down into the dock. And then you don't need to go down to the dock to reopen a window. You just press Command H, the application goes away. And you can summon it back by either pressing the application uh, name down in the dock, or by toggling to it using Command Tab. Uh, and then the last one, of course, is Command M to minimize your window. And that's pretty much it. Well, folks, that's all for me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, well, that other button works okay too. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos like these. But most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.